we we've been looking at Hebrews. I have for a couple weeks. Um, Hebrews chapter one, verse one, two, and three. We've talked about verse one and and then uh, two and three, and that we said there were seven things in there that we wanted to bring out. And the first one was that he's appointed heir of all things. And the second was that through him God made the universe. The third was he's the radiance of God's glory. Fourth, he is the exact representation of God's being. And then the fifth is that he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So those five things we've already covered. <clears throat> so I'm going to go on and start on the number six one tonight. And and I think that maybe this is the very heart of the matter uh, when you're talking about who Jesus is and what he has done and what he has done for us. This really goes to the core of everything, the reason he came. And the, <clears throat> and the sixth thing is that he makes purification for our sins, is what he said. So, so who, through him, he is a radiance of God's glory and is that imprint of his nature and upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purification for our sins. So he makes that statement. He made purification for our sins. That's the very reason that he came. Uh, he he came to deal with the problem of man's sin. That was the problem. That's the reason Jesus had to come. Hey, Brother Craig, come on in. He's right here now. He is, he is being viewed like a priest because he's doing priestly things, making purification for the sin. But the thing about Jesus is he's, he's the priest and he's also the sacrifice. He's the priest and he's the offering. He is all of that. And he's seen that. So here he has he 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 does something that uh, an earthly priest can't do. He put away sin once and for all. I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> and in Hebrews eight it says, verse twelve he says I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. So when he did it, and we give our sins to him and he's made justification for our sins, he's cleansed our sins, then they're done away with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, uh, that's the freedom in Christ Jesus that it doesn't always come knocking back at your door. Now sometimes we look at it, right? Come on, somebody. Sometimes we can just look and say, oh, that's where I messed up. But as far as the penalty for it, no more. He paid it. He made purification. In, in verse um, Hebrews 10, 17, he says, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. You need to, sometimes we need to get those scriptures in our mind and in our heart for ourselves, right? Because we deal with guilt a lot. I mean, I talk about Sunday morning, sometimes guilt come knocking at your door, scratching on your window, trying to wake you up, telling you about who you used to be. Well, you can quote that scripture right there. You don't remember our, our sins anymore. But we also need to remember that for other people. Because when you deal with other people, you're going to deal with people that are saying, I've done too much. I've gone too far. Mm -hmm. I can't find a way back. I don't know how to get out. I, I, you know, but you need to remember that. Hey, God forgives you. If he forgives you, it's forgiven. Then the third reason is that we need to be like, we need to be like Jesus. If he don't remember it, if he doesn't remember what Jimmy did to me, right? If Jimmy has done something to me, and if God doesn't remember it, then what business do I have holding it against him? Now that's good teaching right there. And that's a hard thing to do. See, that's good teaching, but that's hard to do. That's hard for the teacher to do. I'm just saying. It's hard to do it, but if he did it, we should do it. Because... 
he made purification for our sins because he bore all of our sins. He, he carried our sins, we say, right? In Hebrews 9. See, Hebrews, I'm quoting a lot out of Hebrews because he talks about this so much. Verse 28, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of men, will appear a second time, look at this, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly, are eagerly awaiting him. So when he comes again, he ain't coming to, to be a lamb. Amen? Yeah. He's coming as a lamb. Yeah. He's coming as a rescuer. He's coming to, to, to mete out justice on this earth. To give to those who, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, their reward, and to those who are not, their reward. To each and who and ever that may be. So he made this offering that brought remission. Hebrews 10, verse 18, where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering of, for sin. So when he did it, when he said them three words, everybody know what them three words is? It, it is, is finished. finished. It mean it. doesn't have to be that way anymore. And I'm so grateful for that because, you know, just like us, we... We didn't come here to gather, and we don't. We, didn't, we ain't got a sheep pen out here, Pop. If we had, somebody'd have to take care of it. We we don't have a, a a place where we keep turtle doves out here. You don't hear them cooing. And you don't hear you don't hear the sheep blatant, the little lambs crying. You don't hear all that. Thank God. Amen. Because that was a bloody mess. Amen. Amen. But because of what Jesus did, we eliminated that bloody mess. Ain't you glad? One time for all mankind. For as, as by sin entered into the world by one, he left the world by one. Yeah. Or when we say left the world, everybody knows what we're talking about. There's still sin in the world. We still sin. We still fall short. But the penalty for sin, for those who receive Christ. I, I, and you say, well, Brother Don, you teaching the people that know what you're talking about. Well, I have to. Somebody might be watching that don't know. Mm -hmm. But I have to remind myself of that Amen. too, Don. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the penalty for sin. When we say sin is no more. Well, sin is still exists. But the penalty for sin has been paid. Has been paid. He, 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 he didn't just. We were. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, God didn't pardon our sin. He ain't the governor. He ain't the governor. The governor will pardon your sin. He'll, he'll, he can do that. The governor can pardon your sins. God didn't do it. He didn't pardon nothing. Remember, it says he remembers them no more. He wiped them away. He paid the debt. See, because if you pardon, that means somebody got off without paying the debt. Right. But the debt... Had to be. See, because he's a God of justice, mm -hmm. Rick. Mm -hmm. He's a God of justice, and justice has to be met. Mm -hmm. And if it, and the penalty, see, when we say that he fulfilled the law, he fulfilled the penalty of the law. You understand what I'm saying? When, when a lot of people say, well, he did away with the law. Well, the, the law has no power anymore. That's what Romans is trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. The law has no power anymore because the penalty of the law has been has been erased. So then why would I go back trying to keep a law that has no penalty to it? Right? If I can, and, and we see that a lot, we see lawlessness now. Well, we see it a lot in our government. People do things all the time now. We see it in our society. People do stuff all the time. And they, you say, well, they get away with it. Well, that's because there's no teeth to the law. They're breaking the law, but there's no teeth to the law. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't, they don't play with God. No, God don't play. <laughs> there, there's justice with God. And somebody's got to pay the price. Thank God Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And he brought, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It's got to be paid. So he did that. In, in all the other passages, when he was writing, 
things of the former covenant that they could not do in respect to sin. But now he's indicating how Christ has handled sin. The old covenant really could account for sin. It could name the sin. It could name the penalty for the sin. And it could name a, a sacrifice for some of them, right? But the sacrifice was either going to be an animal had to die, or you had to die. Simple as that. But if you, the woman that was caught in adultery, they had every legal right to stone her under the law, right? That was the penalty. So it was going to cost her her life. There was no way she was going to get out of it. She couldn't sacrifice a goat or a lamb or anything. She had to die. For, so somebody had to die. But Jesus, that's how they dealt with it. That's why he keeps referring back to that and talking about how we used to do things and how Jesus fulfilled all that. Now you don't have to do that. If you allow him. You allow it to. When Jesus paid the price, he left none of it undone. Oh, glory to God. I get excited thinking about that. So, past, present, and future sins, he paid the price for. If I allow him to. If I allow him to. The sins that were committed <clears throat> by the evil men of the 20th century, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Adolf Hitler, God paid for their sin. Those 20 million Russians that Stalin let starve to death, God paid the sin. He paid for them. He paid that sin for Stalin. He paid those 6 million Jews and countless other millions of people that Hitler was personally responsible for. He paid for the, all of those individual sins for that. The 200 million Chinese, somebody estimated that, that died during the Cultural Revolution in China by Mao Zedong, he paid for the 200 million deaths at his feet if he had received Christ. Yeah, that's heavy, right? That's heavy. That's heavy. All these people that getting up glorifying Satan and talking about how, you know, and all of this stuff, he paid for their, if they'll repent, he'll forgive them. Right. He paid for that. That's heavy. You, you think about that. Mm -hmm. He paid for your cuss word. Mm -hmm. Huh? He paid for your lie. A little white lie, but it's still a lie. Mm -hmm. He paid for your thoughts. He paid for every bit of it. <clears throat> John said it last week. He said that is why his death was different than any other death that's ever been or ever will be. Because his death, at his death, those 200 million I'm talking about, those 20 million, those 6 million Jews, all the pedophiles, all the murderers, all the rapists, all the liars, all the cheaters, all everything that I have done, it was on him that day. It was, that was 2,000 years ago. Until the, the new creation comes, every sin from that point and those even behind that, he paid the price for that. That's it. I can't comprehend that. Can you? No. No, my mind don't wrap around that. But that is what he did as the priest. That's what... And he was the only sacrifice that going to work. He was the only one. Amen? He did it all. What he was sitting there for. That's, that's, this is why he was here. He made this purification for sin. And then the final thing, the seventh thing, is that he sat down. He sat down. He did the work. Sat down. But when he sat down, he sat down and God the Father, right? This is this is my left, but this would be God right at the right hand. He sat down. 
this right hand, this seating at the right hand, tells us a lot of things that we're going to be talking about in the next week or two. About how come, and, and John covered something that he's not an angel. There ain't no angel going to be sitting down at the right hand of the Father. Matter of fact, there ain't no angel going to be sitting down nowhere around the throne of God. They're either going to be bowing down or prostrate, and they're going to be worshiping God. But there ain't no angel going to sit down at his right hand. Only his son can <coughs> sit down at his right hand. And in the right hand on the, of the throne indicates royal, royal sovereignty. So that's why that... And so we, we lose sight of that, right? We live in a yeah. supposedly Democrat republic. And we, we vote and we do all this other stuff. But anybody who was in a monarch, a true, 100%, and I ain't even talking about what they do in England because that's really... That's a parliamentary monarchy. That was just a figurehead. But a true monarchy, the royalty, was it. Mm -hmm. What the king said, the king, it was law. If he said it out of his mouth, it was law. It was the king's edict. It was the king's word. It was the king that said it. And when he's seated down at the right hand, it means he has that authority as well. Come on, son. So, and when he's sat down, also it means that he is, he rested now. Come on. It means, again, he's done his work. His work right there is completed. And when he gets up again, I'm going to be so happy. <laughs> when he stands back up, that means he's coming to get us. Me and David had this conversation the other day. We were talking about saints of God. My pastor's mother, I had to pray for him Sunday. Uh, she did She did go to be with Jesus Sunday. She was so happy. Yeah. And uh, we'll go down to Sarah Lane tomorrow and be a pallbearer. They'll bury her, but her body. But uh, I, I made me and David start thinking about some things. And, and she said, talking about others who had gone on to be with the Lord. She said, the, and she had tears in her eyes when she was telling me, she said, do you, do you think God's getting them ready? He's pulling them out because they can't take what's going to come? I mm -hmm. said, I believe some of it mm -hmm. is that. Mm -hmm. I believe some of it is, he says, you know what, I don't want them to go through this. Some of it take them a while. Mm -hmm. And for those of us that are still here, he's going to help us through it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. But I recall in 2020 or 2021, I had the same conversation with Wayne that doing. Brother, Brother Wayne told me he had just buried some very close friends of his in his church. Strong, stalwart people. He said, Brother John, I, I wonder if he's getting them people ready. Getting up up there, you know, getting riding lessons, learning how to ride them horses while they were coming back. I need to see my mama. <laughs> I said, well, Brother Wayne, there may be something to that. I don't know. But the next time Jesus comes, set, stands, when he stands up, that's when we're going to mount up. Glory to God. If we're there, we're going to mount up. And if we ain't there, we're going to go up. Praise the Lord. One way, we up. He's up. When he gets up, we all getting up. If you're there with him, you're going to get up. You're going to mount up. If you're here, you're going to get up. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Because mm -hmm. that's what the Word said. Yeah. My God, I can preach that. I'm not going to say that. Man. Yeah. So, so his work is complete. And now he has retired to his place of honor for a little while. Again, a priest don't do his work seated. Only a king can sit down. Mm -hmm. A king, a priest got to stay. There was a there was a mercy seat over the throne, over the ark of the covenant. And the priest didn't never go sit down on that mercy seat, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? I'm gonna tell you something. If you go to Luke four and around verse eight in there, 
when Jesus read that, you remember? For the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, he has anointed me. Remember that? Yeah. When, he, when he sat down, you know what they did, don't you? They started tearing their clothes. And they said, we've been to kill him because he sat down. See, They understood. Now, when he sat down, uh-oh, wait a minute. Is he saying he's the one? That's why he sat down? When Jesus sat down is when they got mad. When he was talking, it was stirring them up. But boy, when he sat down, mm -hmm. hallelujah, yeah. that got them going. Who does he think he is? Well, he, he, he didn't think he was nothing. He knew who he was. <coughs> he knew what he was going to do. He knew that in, in what we referring to right here in verse number three was thing to happen. When he finished his work, he was going to be seated right there. In Ephesians 4, verse 10, I love this scripture. I love all of Ephesians 4. But right here he says, in verse 10, he said, He who descended is the one who ascended. Right? He descended into the tomb, and then he ascended from the tomb. But he also says right here, he ascended far above all heavens. Right? That he might fill all things. Don't you think about this for a minute. They got them telescopes out there now. They got stuff out there better than the Hubble now. And they're seeing all, they can't count the stars. Can't count. They can't count all. And they're talking about, oh, we found this one, look like there's a planet in there, like Earth. Think about this. He's above that. He's above that. He's above farther than science. Our feeble attempt to look out into the other in the reaches of the galaxy, he's way above that. Yeah. That's him. That's where he's at. There was a friend that thought he was in the black hole. There was nothing real in the black hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no. It's where the Paris Dome was. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like something he'd say. He would say, hell is a black hole. Yeah. Philippians 2, verse 9 says, Therefore God and we've quoted this before, in, in this teaching, has highly exalted him and has bestowed upon him a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He's in heaven. He's there with the majesty. And he says those under the earth, that means those who are in the bowels of hell will bow the knees of God. There's a great, I say great, a famous uh, uh, atheist who mocked everything about God. And ridiculed anybody that would believe in God. He died, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, will buy, he, will, he will confess mm -hmm. that Christ mm -hmm. is Lord. Mm -hmm. The great kings of the, and, and rulers of the ages, pharaohs and emperors and dictators and presidents and leaders, no matter what they thought or how they thought, if they, if they weren't Christian, if they didn't love the Lord Jesus Christ, it don't matter. They are going to say, He is Lord. I thought I was something, but I wasn't nothing. That is who He is. Well, tell them to do it now and do it later. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> Amen. So that's it. I got them first three verses. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, we've been doing those. It took three weeks to get the three verses done. So good, there's part, part one, two, and three. But we are going to now, uh, next week, 
go into verse 4, and that's where we want to talk about the angels, and that's what I really wanted to get John to teach so that I could kind of break this down a little bit on what I was going to teach. Because when I read it, I said, man, I need to really need to get into that a little bit and kind of break that down. 